Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord? Let me tell you, there's no place like it. There's no place like it. That's why I pray that we would always have this expectancy when you come to church or when, whenever we gather together, you would have this expectancy to, to meet with God. Because the guarantee in Scripture is, is if you draw near to the Lord, He will draw near to you. Amen. And I believe the Lord wants to draw near to you, wants to speak to you this morning. And, you know, I praise God for Pastor Romel and Sister Susan that are here today. I praise God for their lives. And uh, I've been so blessed just uh, having a little bit of time with them. I'm encouraged. Do you know that as a pastor, sometimes it's very hard uh, to talk about things that no one else really understands. But it's wonderful when you get to fellowship with someone and talk about things and you know that they get you. <laughs> they get you. And, you know, and I praise God uh, for Pastor Romel and Sister Susan that they're here. And I believe that the Lord has a word for us. Amen. And as you listen to the word of the Lord, I pray you would clearly hear the voice of God for you. Amen. And that your prayer would be, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Amen. It's not about the words or the points or anything, but it's just the power of the Holy Spirit that will work. So I want to put our hands together and welcome Pastor Amel as he brings the word of the Lord this morning. It's uh, truly an honor and joy for us to be able to serve with your pastor, Pastor Tim, and Ati Daff, and everyone here, the worship team here at our church. And before we go to the Word of God this morning, I would like to show you a short video of our recent national worship convention in the Philippines that we have been hosting for the past 12 years. This is actually a convention that I'm hoping, we're praying, that you will be able to send Pastor Tim Hopefully next year, I'm putting him on the spot right now because I really uh, believe that he's not only for our church here. Can you share him to the world? <laughs> so, oh, no, no. <laughs> can we please show the video? This is held every National Day or Independence Day in the Philippines, uh, June 12. So here it is. Sa Dios ang papuri sa Dios ang papuri sa Dios ang papuri papuri Ginagawa natin itong patuloy kasi naniniwala tayo na calling ng ating bansa ang mag-worship. Kaya habang may instruction si Lord na ituloy-tuloy ito, God willing, magagawa nga natin yearly ang National Worship Convention. Personally, 
yung kapag yung heart mo is involuntary, yung ganyan, uh, dead maka sa pagod, dead maka sa hasen, dead maka sa stress. Ayan. So, ayun, full feeling siya. Uh, this uh, gathering, the National Worship Convention, na ang tema ko ay ang heart, ay isang napakaganda at napaka-importante pagtitipo ng mga born again, ng mga churches, lalo na ng mga worship teams. Because being part of this, attending this, is an opportunity for all of us to not only worship the Lord, but to be equipped para mas lalo tayong maging effective sa paglilingkod natin sa Thank you for rejoicing with us for what the Lord has done this 2024 for the National Worship Convention. As Can I ask you to clap your hands once again? And can you give a shout offering to the Lord as well? You know what you just did? You just said that you will be sending Pastor Tim next year. <laughs> I think it's recorded. <laughs> so... Uh, thank you so much once again. And in the few moments or few minutes that, that is actually allotted for the Word of God for this morning, I'd like to start off with, in 1977, I just Googled this. Now, in 1977, there's a singer, writer. rather hurt you honestly than mislead you with a lie. How many of you have heard that song? Please don't pretend that you didn't. <laughs> so the song goes like this. I'd rather hurt you honestly than mislead you with a lie. And who am I to... Uh, that's how the song goes. <laughs> now, what does it mean with, with, with our sharing for this morning? Uh, you see, us preachers, or for those who preach, our job is not actually to be liked, but actually our job is to tell you the truth. Consistent with this song, I'd rather hurt you honestly than mislead you with a lie. But it doesn't mean that I intend to hurt you today. <laughs> I intend to share the Word of God to you today. Uh, the, the church that we're pastoring for the past 12 years, when this year started, the Lord led us to just come to the Word of God every Sunday and we don't do topical uh, messages anymore, at least for this year or until the Lord returns. Because our, the instruction of the Lord for us is to just simply open the Bible, start with Genesis 1. Which is actually very important for us because if we don't get past Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, which says 
in the beginning, God created. Actually, you could put a, a pause with, in the beginning, God. If we don't get past that, we would probably or most likely, we will have difficulty believing Noah's Ark. Believing that Adam was was tasked by God to name all the animals. Aren't you glad that he was so intelligent that he named the elephant elephant and not mosquito? <laughs> so there's a preacher who said he was, you know, when in one morning he woke up, he saw a dinosaur, he said, dinosaur, uh, giraffe. And then, of course, in the evening he started, so he saw cat, dog. So if we don't get past and God create uh, in the beginning, God, we will have difficulty believing that Peter walked on water. If we get past in the beginning, God, then most likely we will be okay. Today, I would like to share with you Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. The, the first eight verses. And it goes like this. The Bible tells us, And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. Probably this is July or June. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought. Oh, I forgot. I'm in England. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the, the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, quick, three seas of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they Eight. The challenge for us is there's a propaganda all over the world that the Bible is an ancient writing that is not applicable today. But the truth of the matter is everything written in the Bible can be applied in our present time. This is the only book that teaches us, that teaches us how to live and it teaches us how to die. There's no other book like it. So from verse 1, to verse 8, uh, these are a couple of takeaways that we could, we could learn from the reading of Genesis 18, 1 to 8. Number one, it's important to have this, knowing and hearing. Um, there were three men who came in the tent of Abraham passing by, and it's amazing how he recognized immediately that these are not ordinary people. He recognized the divine. In John 10, verse 27, it tells us, For all believers, the Lord is telling us, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow. I pray that both of those things that the, the verse has told us, we are able to apply in our lives. We are able to hear, and we are able to obey. There's no sense in hearing God when we don't have any uh, plans of obeying what He's saying. I, I get it. There are times we want Him to tell us that He would give us this, He would give us that. But the truth of the matter is that's so simple to be true because He also tells us what to give up. Genesis 22 will tell us that there's a promise for Abraham, a son, and yet, God said, would you offer him? Not all the time he will tell you, I'll give you this. Many times he'll tell you as well, give up this. 
The only proper response, remember there were three, three, three characters who came and he recognized it's the divine. A lot of people or a lot of preachers are saying that two of them were angels and one of them is Jesus, which is called Christophany. It means appearance of Jesus in the different times and seasons in the Old Testament. Because this was centuries before Jesus was born. But he had already those appearances. So one of them is believed to be the Lord himself. And Abraham recognized it. And the lesson that we would learn from here, here is the only proper response when we are with the divine is to worship. And when we worship, we mean adoration and humility. We've seen in, in the conference or the convention that we just held that there's a lot of space where people were dancing, were shouting, jumping, if you will. You know, as a worship leader, it really um, encourages us when people begins to jump, begins to rejoice. But equally important as worship leaders, that there will be spaces where people will be able to bow down before God. In fact, as a worship leader, I treasure those moments more than the jumping. Again, I don't have anything about jumping. I have jumped since 1992. Until now that I am 32. I oh, know, 34 in the waistline. <laughs> At least there's something 34 in me. <laughs> but equally important is to just come to the Lord in humility, and the gesture for it is actually bowing down before Him. When Abraham saw the, the, the three, immediately his response is honoring, worshiping, to be grateful and to be thankful. You know, as, as pastors, as ministers, um, in the top 10 or probably in the top two, counseling that we do is about the will of God. People come to us, ask us, pray, pastor, pray for me, pray for us. I'm seeking for God's will. Normally for love life, then secondary for business. We all want to know God's will. And yet, the Lord is not obligated to tell us the unknown will of God if we don't follow the known will of God. And one of His known will is in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. In John 12, John 12, uh, I think it's about seven or eight verses, uh, one to, to seven or eight. It's a story of, of, the, of Lazarus, Martha, and uh, Mary. It was a week after the great miracle where Lazarus was, he arose from the dead when Jesus brought him back to life. So after a week, the family, which is actually a close family friend of Jesus, held a banquet in his honor. It is their worship to God. In the account, it says Martha served, which is actually her only appearance in that verse. But remember, Martha, in I think Luke chapter 10, Martha was busy serving and it was actually a kind of serving that, that Jesus did not approve because it's the kind of serving that you're serving and yet you're complaining about others. But apparently by John 12, Martha has already learned this, her lesson. That's why the only account there, it says, Martha, sir. Sa Tagalog po, wala namang problemang maging Martha. Walang problemang maging mag-serve. Wag ka lang masungit. Wag ka lang masungit. Kasi nagsaserve ka nga. Masungit ka naman. Hindi. Walang effect. Diba? But, but marami, a, a lot of people are mistaken that, that Jesus 
rebuke Martha for serving. No, he rebuked Martha because she's serving with a different attitude. So praise God, by John 12, she already learned her lesson. That's why it's only Martha served. In that account, Lazarus, the, the account says Lazarus sat. So a lot of people are saying probably he's lazy or something. He just sat there. But come to think of it, give the guy a break. He just died. And <laughs> Guru pagud pa siya. Diba? He might be very tired dying and <laughs> rising again. But, but it's also a form of worship. Form of worship. Why? The account tells us that Lazarus sat at the feet of Jesus, fellowshipping with him, talking with him, listening to him. Yesterday, I, I caught the tail end of Pastor Tim's awesome devotion for our worship team. And he spoke about intimacy. This is what Lazarus was doing. And then, the third character there would be the sister, Mary. It is the account where she broke a very expensive perfume. And the Bible says, the account says that the cost would be one year's wage. So, uh, last year we went to Canada. We, we were in Canada to minister. And when we went home, Somebody gifted my wife, Ati Susan. Somebody gifted her with a, what do you call it properly? Is it perfume or parfum? Ano <laughs> So, she was, somebody gave her a, a perfume and it smells so nice. It smells so good. It makes me look good as well. Uh, but it's Louis Vuitton. And then, of course, um, because it's just a small bottle and she uses it frequently, of course, it's now finished. It's all done, gone. Inaamoy na lang namin yung bote. Sabi ko kasi sa anya, tipirin mo, pa isa isa lang. Eh, kaso ganun. So, we, we went to Japan a few months ago. We were in Hong Kong a few months ago as well. In other countries as well, looking for that brand. Looking for that particular perfume. Yung flavor niya, kari-kari. <laughs> so, oh, it, it, was, it really smells nice. At talagang, it smells expensive. Di ba iba talaga amoy ng... Louis Vuitton's uh, Johnson's Baby Cologne. <laughs> no, no contest. And lo and behold, we were in Japan. We didn't see any, anything like it. So the other day, we were in uh, Selfridges. We were pretending to be... <laughs> so we went to a museum called Selfridges. To see their exhibits. <laughs> Lo and behold, we saw the perfume. I almost bought it until I saw that it's about 500 pounds. <laughs> so I said, don't look at it. That's, that's it. <laughs> now I'm telling you this story to give you a, a, an idea what Mary did. What Mary did. Considering, considering that these three, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, actually, their house is in Bethany. And Bethany actually means place of the poor. And if we will learn where they lived, they were in the slums. 
It's really a sacrifice when you want to honor God. The account also tells us that as she broke it, the aroma filled the place and people knew that they were with Jesus. Another side lesson would be people will know who, who you were with. When you go to Burger King, they'll know. You smell like the person you're with. I don't know if that's sadly or... <laughs> the point is, if we spend time with the Lord, with Jesus, through His Word, through worship and prayer, that's how you'll smell like. People will know whom you've been with. Moving on, I have about uh, 14 minutes. Actually, the account tells us that they honored Jesus. Verse 9 to 15 of Genesis 18, they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, she is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women has ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now, now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Can you tell that to, can you say that to the person beside you, especially if she's a, um, a woman advanced in age? Is anything too hard for the Lord? For my cousin as well. Is anything too hard for the Lord? You know, there are, hey Amen. Amen? Atita, amen? <laughs> At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh. Ganda pala nung accent ko na. I did not laugh. For she was afraid. He said, no. But you did Laugh. Well, I'm not mad with a laugh. Nothing wrong about it, but there's certain types of laugh or laughter. There's a laughter for joy, laughter of excitement and anticipation, but there's also this laughter of unbelief. In, in, in a few chapters before this, actually Abraham laughed as well, but it is something that is a laughter of anticipation. Laughter of expectation. Whenever God tells you something that is impossible, I pray that we will be able to laugh with joy. To laugh in excitement and not to laugh because of unbelief. Yun yung mga klase ng tao eh. Yung mga, may tao na <laughs> talaga. Or may, la may tao na <laughs> We. It insults God whenever He tells us something. By the way, if you read the Bible and if you study it, you'll find that He's not a fan of uh, practicality. He's not a fan of, this is how people do it. He always does it His way. That's why when Noah was asked to build an ark, it was built not not near the seaside. It was built in the mountains. When Joshua was fighting uh, in Jericho, instead of resting, he was asked to march. Whenever God tells you something, and pero may problema din doon eh. There's actually a problem with when you know when people will come to you and say, "This is what the Lord tells me." A lot of people are deceived as well, because they fail to read this. 
And they fail to get the counsel of their leaders, of their pastors. But it doesn't negate the fact that God speaks to us. And when He speaks, you better believe it. Uh, verse 16 to 21, Then the man set out from there, and they looked down toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to set them on their way. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have chosen him, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. So the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Now, um, in this part of, of the chapter, it speaks about intercession. It speaks about prayer. Prayer is polite requests. Supplication is a humble appeal. Intercession is action of saying prayers in behalf of another person. The action of intervening in behalf of another person. Um, I would propose to you today that most likely we are stuck with prayer and supplication. That most of the time when we come to God in prayer, we pray for our own needs, which is not inherently wrong. But there's another type of prayer that God wants us to do. And this is what Abraham did. He interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. He came to the Lord for the needs of other people. Um, as we do discipleship, uh, there's this word. It's called Christ-likeness. It is actually the goal of discipleship. That's why there's discipleship. That's why we study the word. That's why we have fellowship. That's why we gather together because we want to be more like Christ. Remember in John 12, um, the lesson of Mary, whoever you hang out with, you look like them. So that's the, one of the, the goal of discipleship is for Christ-likeness. Another one is what I, I caught, Pastor Tim was, was teaching yesterday. It is intimacy with God. I'd like to propose to you today that another part of Christ-likeness that sometimes we forget is he is actually an intercessor. It says in Hebrews 7, 25, Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Part of Christ's likeness is to be an intercessor, praying for the needs of other people, praying for the needs of your city, praying for the needs of this nation. We keep coming back here. Uh, the first time I came here was in 2007. And really, time flies so fast. It has been 17 years since the first time I landed here. And we keep coming back simply because we have the burden for this nation. We have the burden for this city. We're not working here. We're not earning here. We're coming here to intercede for the nation. It's quite a surprise and actually uh, quite a miracle for us to be able to afford to come here almost every year. When I speak to people, uh, would you like to go home and have a holiday in the Philippines? So I have an idea. Why don't you, you know, if you're five, maybe four of you, place them in a balikbayan box. <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> we'll just receive them. <laughs> Pero our burden has brought us here. 
in a miraculous way until now we don't know where, where we get the, because we don't solicit we don't charge when we're asked to minister we don't charge when we're asked to do concerts now, even in the philippines if they ask us to 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 do concerts or conferences we, we don't we we're not expected to be paid we don't charge but we do blacklist no, that's a joke. We are to intercede for this city and for this nation. As I close, I would like to give you a sneak peek of Genesis 19. I hope and I pray that I, you know, in a way, uh, whetted your appetite for God's word. That when you go home, or probably this week, you'll have interest to probably I'll start with Genesis one. And then, you know, it won't hurt you to read the Bible from uh, from cover to cover. It won't hurt you. Promise. A sneak peek of Genesis nineteen as I close. Genesis nineteen verse one: The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed himself with his face to the earth. There's a contrast on how Abraham treated or responded when he saw the divine coming over his tent. With Lot also actually having the same experience but different response. And this is actually a loaded account about Lot. And it says a lot about Lot. Because the account tells us that he was there at the gate, sitting there. You don't sit at the gate if you're not one of the leaders or elders of the city at that time. Which also means, most likely, he was okay with everything that's happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. When he saw the two angels coming, he ran and approached them. But in a different manner. Because when Abraham ran and approached the angels and, and the Lord who came over, he ran with, with an attitude of welcome. But I believe when Lot stood up, And ran over the two angels. His attitude was, I got caught. It's a loaded account actually. Because in Romans 12, it tells us, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The operative word here is transform and not conform. Sadly, as Lot was sitting at the gate, he's not helping in the transformation of Sodom and Gomorrah. He's actually conforming to it. We all know the culture now, not only in, in the Philippines, the culture that we're living in right now, I pray that the Lord will use us to transform the culture rather than us conforming to the culture. The Lord would want us to be transformed. The enemy wants us to conform. I'll end with this. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray, Lord, that even as we as we've studied Genesis 18 up to Genesis 19, Lord, you would speak to us on how to apply this in our present lives. For we come in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Amen. God bless you.